rocket is being rolled out at Cape Kennedy this morning. The continue in their 18th day in Earth orbit. Preparations move ahead at the Kennedy Space Center for the July 27th launch of the second crew. Skylab astronauts pointed cameras and instruments at the Earth from San Francisco southeastward through Mexico this afternoon. Such Earth observations are being limited to about one-third of their originally planned length because of the electric power shortage aboard the space station. The astronauts may do a spacewalk next week to make a second attempt at fixing a blocked solar power wing. Power output from the space station's good solar panels will increase sharply during the last week of June when Skylab gets the greatest amount of sunshine. The astronauts are scheduled to return to Earth June 22nd. But officials here at the Johnson Space Center say they might keep the astronauts in space for an extra 10 days to use the increased electric power for scientific research. John Pollock, ABC News, Johnson Space Center. He's walking about 11 hours to try and release a solar panel on the Skylab 1. The panel is held folded against the Skylab by an aluminum strap. Conrad will have to cut or pry the strap loose. Conrad thinks his chances are only 50-50, but NASA officials say they think it's much better than even. We asked ABC's John Pollock at the Johnson Space Center in Houston about the project. Pete Conrad's backup man here on the ground, astronaut Rusty Schweikert, has been working in a water tank designed to simulate the effects of zero gravity, rehearsing the procedures that Conrad will have to go through tomorrow on the spacewalk in order to release that blocked solar energy panel. Schweikert says it's an exhausting exercise, but he's quite confident that Conrad will be able to do the job. He says it's always easier to work in real zero gravity than it is to work in water, and no one has more experience right now than Pete Conrad at working in zero gravity. ABC's John Pollock at the Johnson Space Center in Texas. Conrad is to begin his spacewalk about noon Eastern time. This is the make or break day for Skylab. The astronauts either will solve the power shortage problem or fail. A spacewalk is scheduled late this morning in an effort to extend a solar wing that is only partially swung out. With it in place, the full complement of experiments will be possible. Without it, the first Skylab crew will fail in their mission and things will be much tougher for the two crews to follow, Conrad Kerwin and White, up to the space station. The walk could take as little as 90 minutes and up to four hours. Commander Conrad has said he thinks they have only a 50-50 chance of success. After an hour and a half, Conrad fears he and Dr. Joe Kerwin may simply run out of steam. Officially, NASA is maintaining an optimistic profile, but at least some pessimism is creeping in. In an interview with CBS News this morning, Skylab Program Director William Schneider said he's still confident, but also swallowing a lot of road aids. Conrad and Paul White this morning began the second spacewalk of Skylab 1. We'll hear about it from Reed Collins at CBS News Space Headquarters in New York. Conrad and White opened the hatch some 45 minutes ahead of time and went right to work. They paused a moment to gaze at the Earth hurtling along below. Boy, it looks like a long way down to the Earth. Hi there. You know why? Why, it is a long way down. I guess you're right. All right, I'll keep on going. Conrad kept on going and smashed at the hull with a hammer to see if a stuck battery regulator inside might be jarred into operation. Boy, is he hitting it. Holy kid. All right, anything happen? Houston EB-3. Uh, he hit it with the uh, hammer. I had no joy. I turned the charger on, and I'm getting a lot of amps uh, plus on the battery. You want to have a look at it? Okay, that's good. It, it worked. Thank you very much, gentlemen. You've done it again. <laughs> and so, the last spacewalk planned for this first Skylab mission began on a successful note. Conrad and White working in space with an occasional glance down home, where they'll return on Friday. Reed Collins, CBS News, Space Headquarters, New York.